I wanted to know what was going on at the heart of the game of mates. So I designed an experiment using a simple computer game and $10,000 of cold hard cash. The computer game is played by four people at a time who are known to each other only as shapes. The rules are simple. In each round, one person must give one of the other three a gift of some money. But for all players to get the most money across all 50 rounds of the game, each gift must go to the player with the highest productivity number, which was randomly selected each round. But there was another way to play that would earn individual players 50% more. If you can find a loyal mate, the two of you can team up and gift each other most of the money. Even though that screws everyone else and shrinks the economy of the whole game by 11%. Do you know what? In 84% of games, that's what happened. We tried all sorts of variations to the rules. But the only thing that stopped the game of mates forming was to start the game with a gift so small the players realised they had to all cooperate to get any value. This isn't a conspiracy. Human beings are just wired to cooperate in these ways. And although those of us on the outside of a game of mates might despise those on the inside, when we get the chance to play, we do exactly the same. In the real world, the game of mates costs hundreds of billions of dollars. If human nature is to blame, we're never going to change it. Instead, our rules and regulations must take this behaviour into account. I want to show you an example from the real world of property development. 